Not bad timing. As soon as it came back, it says five o'clock. <laughs> and we are here tonight with Mike Paranormal. And um, thank you guys for popping in with us. Appreciate you. Thank you for having us. So um, just a little question I like asking everybody is uh, what got you started in the paranormal or interested in the paranormal? Well, um, actually, like I've always, since I was younger, I just kind of got, um, was very intrigued by it. Definitely started with the shows and stuff. And then, um, you know, as, as time progressed, I got older, I didn't really have a specific experience that got me um, interested in it and kind of chasing that. But um, as, as I grew, you know, as the shows kind of started, that kind of intrigued me. Then we started actually going to different locations. And once you get that first, um, I don't know, that first evidence that just kind of had me hooked. So, um, you know, that's kind of just how we got, um, how I got started. And then normal in the last five years, I'd say is where we've really um, gotten involved with going to locations and um, joining teams and been able to actually go out and experience things more. Okay, cool. So um, is it just you two? So we actually are part of um, all this. We, us two are kind of like the mighty paranormal that we um, we're in North Georgia and we're actually part of um, paranormal society of Savannah. That is it, but we're, you know, so far from there that we actually can't really investigate with them as much as we like. So for what we do up in the area that we're at, we kind of, um, we, you know, just kind of, it's just mainly the two of us and maybe two or three other people that are local. Okay, cool. So, um, what areas or what places do you normally go to whenever you do the investigations? So we've um, primarily been um, like to a lot of like the larger locations more recently. Um, my favorite so far has been, well, actually we started out like the first one that we actually went on a full investigation where we took our equipment was at Waverly. And so that kind of got me definitely hooked there. Um, we got some great evidence while we were there. And then we've kind of um, you know, just we found like the local small hotspots within um, Northeast Georgia, like there's a local bridge here. We've been to um, Americas to um, investigate there, the Rylander House. We go like to some some private um, local private areas where, you know, we've kind of been asked to come in and and, you know, kind of see what um, what I don't know, kind of put some. Um, some evidence behind some experiences that some local people were having just to kind of prove or disprove what they were thinking was going, um, was happening there. Uh, most recently we've been to the Thomas house, which is in Bowling Springs, Tennessee. That's probably my favorite place we've been so far. Um, enjoyed it. It's a small, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a small bed and breakfast that, um, very, um, has a lot of activity. Um, there's, you know, they had a, a book written about it. We went, we actually had a team, um, investigate there, um, for a ghost hunt weekend. And, um, I don't know, we just really enjoyed that. Cool. Cool. And you, I think you said something about Savannah, Georgia, right? Yes. Okay. Savannah's got to have a lot of history, correct? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We've, um, we, um, we go down there with our team, um, and investigate some of the local places there. Um, Terry can probably speak more to that. I'm kind of feel like I'm taking over everything. That's fine. But yeah, we, um, we, 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 uh, you know, we live six hours from there, so we don't get down there as much as we can, but, uh, we go down there for special, a uh, couple of hotels we've, we've investigated at. And like she said, we went to, uh, with the, with the team, we met up in central Georgia in, uh, Americas and Plains, which is the home of Jimmy Carter, um, President Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we went to his former house called the Rylander House, which has um, some activity. And uh, another thing that's down there right in the city next door in Andersonville that I was really moved by was the uh, Civil War uh, Prisoner of the Civil War Prisoner of War uh, Museum. And the grounds had, um, they had a large spacious grounds with cemeteries and um of the of the, of the uh, soldiers and uh the, they still have the, the the green space which was the former hospital during the prisoner of war that we had a lot of activity at uh with the rum pod um going off quite a bit right after we were asking questions 
very moving place, though. You know, you hate to see U.S. soldiers with <clears throat> idea what U.S. soldiers went through, mm -hmm. the harsh conditions. But getting back to Savannah, yeah, it, it's it's a very, very uh, spiritual or haunted place. Um, uh, One of the hotbeds of the paranormal activities. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind trying to get down in those areas down there because I know that the, there's a lot of a lot of uh, places down there that have activity. Oh, yeah, um, it's, it's fun. It's just a fun, it's just a great, there's just such a great vibe when you're walking around in the downtown area. The cemetery is just in the middle there. A lot of fun. I was actually, actually going to ask you if you guys have uh, went into the, any, any of the cemeteries and done investigations at night. Uh, I can't say that we actually went into them at night. We went around them. There's fence. They're fenced. They got the you know the wrought iron fences, and we kind of did some activity on the perimeter of them. Um, but I don't. We didn't actually go in. Okay. Well, I was just wondering. I know that we've done a few cemeteries up here, so yeah. yeah but those are easily accessible. Easily access. Yeah, yeah accessible. I mean, you got one that's out in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Yeah. You know. They are in town. You know, of course, they're just, they're beautiful to look at. They're, you know, that American Gothic design. Oh, yeah. Just what you see in the movies. That is, that is really cool, though. It is. And it's just a good vibe at night. People are walking around. Um, there's this, it, there's tours. I, I think there must be about five tours that are constantly running into each other. Uh, big business down there. So, um, do they do tours of the cemeteries then, or? I don't think they. I think they have. They don't have access, but they'll go around them just like us. Um, oh, okay. And it depends on it, it depends on the cemeteries. I think as you get, maybe the ones down in the middle of town are fenced in, but the ones on the outside you have better access. But I think most people are attracted to being in the downtown area. Plus, that's yeah. probably staying too. That would most likely be, I think, where more activity would probably be. Little, little richer history for the paranormal there. Yeah, yeah. And then there was the place I like to go to when we're down there is uh, called the Grave Face Museum. Uh, it's basically a, a little independently owned museum. There's one in Chicago too, uh, but it's 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 based in, in Savannah. It's, in, it's like a murderbilia museum. Uh, they have a huge uh, John Gase, John Wayne Gacy collection. Um, a, just a lot of artifacts that they were able to get from from family members uh, and mm -hmm. you know whoever was given away. They've got stuff from the uh, the Jimmy Jones, the J the Reverend Jimmy Jones um, cult fiasco. Oh wow! The Manson stuff, uh, articles of clothing people wore in prison, like Eileen Warnos. You can see her underwear up there. Oh, sure. just weird, just weird stuff. And just that was a, a good movie. A lot of, a uh, lot of, a uh, lot of uh, lesser known things too that you might have heard of, but you're like, oh, I kind of forgot about that. You can, uh, and they, they send you, they'll sell you a three day pass, and uh, you'll need all three days because it just you want to read everything, you want to take it all in. <clears throat> Long story short, we we do uh, we have done an investigation in there. And uh, while we didn't get a lot of activity while we were there, we uh, our members of the Paranormal Society of Savannah have had activity there in the past. But it, it's still an exciting place to be in. It's great vibe. Yeah, I mean, we actually we um, there's a place called the Planners Inn that's on Reynolds. I think it's Reynolds Square, and we investigated there with our team at one of our events and. It was, I mean, we had a ton of activity. Like there was, I mean, everywhere that we went within that spot, there there seemed to be a lot of activity, whether it was on, you know, one of the top floors, whether it was on the elevator, um, the basement, like multiple areas within the basement, we had a lot of activity. So if you have the opportunity to go there, um, definitely try that. And the Weed Sorrel House, that's, um, that's a great place to investigate as well. So, um, in all your times investigating and stuff, uh, what is the coolest evidence that you think that you've caught? So, um, I would say, like, the first thing that, like, what always comes to mind is when we were at Waverly, we were um, in, with a group, like, we were sitting in a room with a group doing <laughs> tests, 
method. And I had my EVP recorder going and um, didn't really think, I mean, like you could, you know, the, the light was going off and on such as that, but you didn't really hear anything. Like there wasn't any, um, you know, like any whispers, anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we were going back when I was going back through um, my recording and going through that, there was a child, like a baby laughing. Like there was nothing like, you know, we were speaking and then in dead silence, you hear this little giggle and there was no children there. It was 17 degrees. There was like five of us in the room. And, and that was amazing. And then, um, and then most recently I would say we were at the, um, at the Thomas house and we were, you know, doing, um, doing questions and such. And, um, actually had, a. We, we didn't hear it during the, during the actual session. We had, um, we had activity like where things were moving and, um, you know, like we had some, some different, you know, just some different um, things that we could actually see and experience then. But we actually had some question and answers where I think one of the questions was, you know, do you enjoy music? Do you enjoy a specific one or general? And then clear as day, it's, we, it's, you know, it spoke back general. So, I mean, I would say that's my favorite. Oh, and then also, at Waverly, we went back to Waverly earlier this um, back in the summer with uh, with the Paranormal Society and, of Savannah, and we had taken balloons and put lights in them. And I was um, in one of the rooms with some of our with some of our teammates, and um, I put the we had the balloon on the table, and literally the I guess it was a child. We didn't have any I didn't have any EVP evidence um, there, but. Um, I could actually on command and with, you know, every, every interaction, I would say it would push the balloon from one side of the table to the other. It's like we could put it on one side and I would say, you know, can you push it to me? And literally you would see the thing start coming towards me. And I say, okay, well, can you push it to, you know, another team member and specify which team member it was. And it would go right across there. And so we oh. you know, did everything we needed to do to debunk to make sure there wasn't any, um, any kind of like wind or, you know, or, you know, something that could be making it move. And I mean, that was, that was really, really cool. See with evidence like that, that is, that is um, really cool because it's also showing that there's an intelligent hunting there as well. Yeah. Well, as many guests as we've had on that over what the last four or five years, we've been doing this since 2019 and they've talked about, Waverly Hills, it's like they've always got some activity. Somebody's yep. got something super cool that happened to them while they were there, you know. And it wasn't always the first trip; it may have been the second or third trip. But you know, they they had something cool to say to the place. It's definitely a bucket list for me. Yeah. 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 We really enjoy, I mean, just the architecture. I mean, I don't know. I just, we just really enjoy it there. So we, you know, went there twice, probably would definitely be going again soon um, with, you know, probably next year we enjoy it. Cause every, you know, once again, every time we go, it's a different experience. So we definitely enjoy it there. So when you guys, when you guys go out and, and uh, you know, people ask you what you do, <laughs> yeah. um, what, what kind of reactions do you get when you tell them that you do paranormal investigating? Well, I mean, you know, where we're at, you know, it's not really, um, it's it, everyone. The first thing is, I mean, that I've kind of gotten is how did, you know, has anything followed you home? Like, that's the first thing everybody asks is what it did something. How do you know something didn't follow you home? I mean, but, you know, I mean, for the most part, everybody's been, you know, just intrigued by it. Like there hasn't really been a lot of negativity or anything like that because, you know, we just are, um, I don't know. We just are, you know, kind of just try to be real cool about it and not, you know, you know, you can kind of gauge your audience as to how receptive they're going to be. So we haven't really had a lot of negative stuff. I mean, that's primarily, I guess, the main thing that I would say is they're like, how do you know that nothing follows you home? And, you know, and then the next thing, and then once you kind of start talking about it, you know, they want to start hearing the evidence. Like, you know, when you tell them, hey, yeah, I got a, mm -hmm. an answer and then, you know, whatever they want to see, like the video. So for the most part, the people that, you know, we've gotten that, you know, that kind of find out what we do, they you know are more intrigued by it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that the shows like uh, Ghost Hunters and, and uh, Ghost Adventures and stuff like that, I think that's kind of brought it more into the mainstream for people to where it's a little more acceptable. Yeah, but those acceptable. people also, those, you know, people got to get some common sense about themselves. You know, 
even though you got paranormal shows, you got Count's Customs, you got all these different reality type shows. The thing is, they're all scripted. You know, there, it's all about ratings and making money. Lots of it. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, that unfortunately Joe's correct about that, and that that's the one thing that really bothers me. You know, they're, they're good shows, but yeah, I mean, it and and I'm not I'm not doubting that they get evidence. I'm not doubting that they, you know, that they have stuff happen. But the thing is, I know that. Like Joe said, it's all scripted. It's yeah. why I try to be raw and open when I go out and do my stuff. Yeah, we don't see nothing. You don't see nothing. Yeah. No. Yeah, you don't see the part where you, you know, you have four hours of nothing and two minutes of something or less than a minute of something. You know, they don't, they yep. definitely don't show like the, the hard part or the waiting part or the discouraging part. It's yeah. all like, you know. You know, I mean, for the most part, they're investigating for a full week and you're and it's crammed into, you know, 15 minutes because it's, you know, 30 minute segment with, you know, at least 20 minutes of commercials. So you don't see the hard part. And then, you know, 10, 15 minutes of that is, you know, um, you know, their research and such. So, yeah, no, definitely. I agree with that. You know, and sometimes putting it out that way, you know, all raw and uncut where, you know, you're not getting nothing, you're getting frustrated, you know, you you always review the footage when you get home, but you may not see something that maybe a viewer, when you put it out there online, totally unedited, might see something. Yeah. You know, this goes back to, to, to what you, you were saying earlier. You know, you didn't find, didn't realize about the evidence until you got home, the VP evidence, right? Yeah. You know, we had the same thing happen when we were investigating that one crash site. You know, it was months later, we're sitting there and we get the phone call from the guy, Dale Kuzmerich, about this. Oh, you hear audio? Did you guys see a plane when we were out there in the field? Did you did you hear a plane? You got it backwards, Joe. Wow. Well, you got it backwards. So I was listening to the audio. I heard what sounded like a prop plane flying over us. But there was, was nothing. My that. audio from my voice recorder. And it wasn't on any of the other oh. uh, pieces of equipment that recorded audio that day. Basically a phantom plane. So it, it, it was, it was weird. It, 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 but it was weird, it was weird it to crashed get crashed in. Right? It sounded like a, well, whatever they had, a Cessna. That's I think they were in a Cessna. And it, it did. It sounded like a single engine pop, prop plane flying over. But... There isn't a single one of us that was out there that day that remembered hearing one or seeing one or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean, like, and, and to speak to that, we actually have started using like multiple recording, recording devices and everybody, like I have one, he has one. And like, I have one that normally that I just leave going. And then I have one that I use with a headset while we're investigating. And then he has one. And it's amazing how you can have different activity on within them. Like they'll pick up one thing and it's, you know, we're within a close vicinity where we shouldn't, you know, we should all have the same activity, but yep. yeah. So it's, um, it's impressive to hear how, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's exciting when you get those, those wins when you come back like that. Oh yeah, it is. It is very much so. Well, you want to do that because there's always the equipment failure on a site too. You know, batteries get drained super fast or just, the equipment fails on you. You know, you go out there thinking you're having a good time and recording stuff and you might have gotten something, but you get home and the card's corrupt. Yeah. You know, so you can't get the files off the card or see what you recorded. And a lot of our that, Waverly, like it's frustrating too. A lot yeah. Of our, yeah, a lot of our Waverly evidence we thought we had, but what was it? The microphone? Yeah, the microphone. Like we had, we had the, uh, when, when we were doing the, the balloon thing and we were so excited to hear, you know, to, to be able to play that back and share that later. But the microphone for that one had completely, um, completely just malfunction just during that session. It was the wildest thing. But like, and speaking of that, we were at the Tom and also we were at the Thomas house and we, you know, we're having, you know, a, a good session while we were in a hallway and the um, camera just immediately, like just, just drained, just quickly drained. And so they were changing, like they were, you know, kind of yeah. called a timeout and they were switching it out. And I made the comment 
now is when we're really going to have something. And I had not gotten that right out of my mouth and something, we heard something kind of throw and like literally hit me in the ankle. It was like a little rock that was not there that hit. So, I mean, it was just interesting how that died. And then, you know, I made the comment and then that happened. So. Uh, yep. It's kind of like when we were out at the um, bar school. Or Aslan. Well, as Aslan, we had that, that EMF meter go crazy. It we went nuts were and we were, had the camera on it recording it. The whole thing. Because I set it down. So that you see, you know, I set it down on the step. It was still going nuts. So he wasn't touching so, it. So I wasn't touching it. And you could see that it wasn't any kind of movement. There were no electrical fields around. You know, and this thing was just going nuts. We get home to check the footage. And the camera file was totally corrupt. Really? Yep. Oh, that's a brand, a great. brand new SD card formatted before we even left for the camera and everything. Tested it before we left. Brand new battery in there, charged, fully charged, and the whole file card was corrupt. Oh my but God. yet, I was able to record on it again and use it later. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and then for, for our school out in that one, Iowa. That one tickles me pink. Because it serves you right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> that one particular one we had before we got all of our equipment set up, we had a basketball in the gym start rolling on its own without being wow. touched. Oh, how cool. And I had five pieces of equipment subsequently fail on me. That was your fault. Five pieces, yeah. That was his own and fault. It and was, it was my fault. Um, the reason oh, yeah. it was my fault is I went into the most active room of the place solo with nobody <laughs> around me, and I provoked. Oh. Whatever was there, I made it mad. And, and were, it targeted me. And it made sure that I got nothing. And, and the thing was, <laughs> I think they were pretty upset. They, you know, when we were listening to that device that that uh, phasma box or plasma box thing that uh, it's a phasma box. All right. So when we were listening to that in that room when Dale set up in there, and you heard all those different voices, there was a few of them that sounded like they were pretty angry to begin with. Mm. And all you did was piss them off much much more. <laughs> And I think it's funny because it serves you right. Well, I kind of proved a point too by doing that. Right, right. But yeah, that that room, the boiler, it's like a boiler room area. It, it's like very dark presence in that room. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! You're you're in all of the school. Walking through the school, you feel just your normal presence. You know, I had a leaf. Energy. He had. I he had to leave out of there when he walked in. He had to actually turn around and walk back out. Oh, I was wow. feeling sick. So I had to get out there and just, you know, <laughs> get my shit together. And then I went back in and I was fine after that. But that first, it was just like way too much of something. And I right. started feeling real nauseated and thought I was going to puke. And right. But so when you walk in there, though, when you first walk into this, this place you feel the energy you can feel it but it doesn't feel like overwhelming or ominous to most people um and then you go into the gym area which is more of the basement and off of that is the the one room that has access to the boiler room and you walk from the gym into that other room and it, it, you know it just feels normal as soon as you cross that threshold into the boiler room, you can feel the heaviness. Oh wow! Yeah. You can you can feel the heaviness of the energy in that room. So yeah, it, it's it's really it's really intense. Um, whatever it was that I made it mad, it wouldn't let me log into my laptop. Really. I had my laptop. I opened up my laptop. I was typing in the password exactly the way I knew it was to be. And it kept denying me. It kept keeping me out. 
kicking me out, so I, I wasn't able to get in. I tried it four different times and it just would not let me in. Um, my voice recorder that I that was working at the crash site decided to quit working. Oh my goodness! But I get home. I'm checking all my equipment. Everything is working fine. I yeah. get home. I I bring up my laptop. I type in my password. Boom, right in. First time. No. Yep. Wow. Yep. My video, my body camera that I have, the video of it didn't go, just the audio. My regular camera, it went through one battery. I changed the battery, and then it, everything after that failed. And that was after, everything after that is when I had it sitting on the tripod aimed at the room, at the boiler room. So. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you guys ever experienced anything like that, but probably, probably. I mean, you know, you never know what's causing it. Is it, you know, is it something that's putting an alteration in your head to do something wrong, or are they directly making the the equipment, you know, misfunction, or you know, it's know. just it's just this, just something we'll probably not figure out in our lifetime. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna live forever. I might figure it out. <laughs> I think the most I've ever had of that kind of if something happening like that is we were is I was typing a Facebook post while we were, you know, kind of um, trying to update or go live or whatever. And it and I would top out and then it would delete and then I would top out and then it would delete like it would just all of my all the words would go away. So I just kind of chalked it up to a bad connection, but I was able to go live. So I haven't you know, even though I was, I was it let me log in, it just didn't let me post any words. That is weird. That, yeah. is, that is kind of a strange thing. Yeah. So you ever go investigating anything else like cryptids or UFOs or? Not yet. I'm open to it. I'd really like to know more about like what's my, my focus and my interest is in the Appalachian area, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia. What's in the what's in the mammoth cave system down there? We don't know. A lot of history too in that area. I, the, yeah, oh, that history. mammoth cave system is huge. It's huge. And we don't even, you know, like who knows where things are. I mean, like that's, that's just, a, that's just to me is a, a wonder in, of itself. Right. And, you know, you, you talk about, are there goblins down there? Are there, is there aliens down there? What anything can be down there? That's my main, that would be my, probably my, my next thing. Uh, you know, I've always, I've always said that, that um, most everything that like, like fantasy and, and, fiction or you know like 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 dragons and goblins and stuff like that i've always said that 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 most of the myths and legends like that are connected to a a real event or or real creatures of some sort at some point in in our earth's history so when you have when you have all these little myths and legends and and stuff like that. I, I I honestly feel that they are connected to something that as actual physical that has been here. Oh yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and I know that that I don't know with with the way the computers are now and and how you can Photoshop stuff and and the uh, um, artificial intelligence getting smarter and being able to create its own like videos and stuff like that. I'm not certain how authentic a lot of the YouTube stuff is, but I've been seeing some really interesting stuff being posted. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta you you gotta really look at some of that stuff with with an open mind and keep in mind that technology in the right hands, you know, somebody that knows what they're doing can really make a video and really make it look real. Yep. You know, I mean, this isn't like, you know, Hollywood in the seventies to have that kind of software and equipment is going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars today. Anybody can get that for little or nothing, if not free. Well, a lot of it's open source. Mm -hmm. on the right. Earth. That's what I'm saying. It's 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 a lot cheaper and easier for people to fake their own things. You know, this goes back to that Patterson footage. 
you know, uh, the, the Bigfoot Patterson footage, you know, from what was that, 67, I think, or somewhere back in that. Mm, it was somewhere. 67 or 68, something like that. So, you know, you can't, you couldn't fake something like that without spending a bundle or edit the film. Well, the whole thing is the way, if you really watch that film and, and just the, the you know they've they've actually taken the original film and they've they've um, put it through a process where they've cleaned it up, and stabilized it. But if you really watch it, you can see the muscle movement under right. the hair, right? On the on you know as the Bigfoot is walking. Right. The only way you're going to get convincing. right, and but the only the only way you're going to get that kind of of muscle movement under the hair like that is to actually have a real person that is of a large yeah. stature have you know get them to glue all this hair on them yeah and walk across naked barefoot mm -hmm. on these rocks because at that time hollywood didn't even have i mean you the... got to think about it look at look at the at that time that's when they they were doing um Man of the, Man of the apes those those costumes okay, from the like movies, kind of you could tell they were so fake. Right, mm -hmm. but if the if oh, yeah. Hollywood had that kind of, of they would have used it exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they would have used point, it. You know, so it, you know it, it's stuff like that. I mean, the enhancement of that video and just just watching it, it just it, it's only just that part of it is very convincing. So I'm thinking of like a scenario where they're about to film and they're like, hey, man, we're going to slap a bunch of glue on you. Why? Where's my costume? Just sh shut up. We're going to put all this glue on you. And we're going to throw all this hair on you. Wait, what? But here's, but here's the funny part about it. Watch it really close. Because that is not a male. That is a very large female. Oh, twist. No. Now, back that time. I don't think there'd be very many women that would actually want to go through that. No. <laughs> no. Be that I'll say not. <laughs> so yeah, that that's another thing, another little factor of it that I feel makes it even more authentic. Yeah, and and nowadays Hollywood and and just about anybody can get their hands on the technology. Oh yeah. You know, we yeah, saw that documentary. That one mockumentary about mermaids, and oh my god, it, it looks so real. Do you ever watch that one? I'm not familiar with that. Mm -hmm. The Discovery Channel did that. They did a mockumentary about the evolution of mermaids. Of of you know, they did uh, to where you know how they're they're saying that we may have came from the apes. Well, they're saying that mermaids are real, and they they also came from the apes, but the apes became aquatic. And you know, through through evolution, you know, right. became what they were. And it, it it was a very convincing mockumentary that they did. And it really? was it was very well done. And 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 the main reason they did this was because it came out later or after it because it was at the end of the part two one that that they were uh, against the military uh, testing their sonar. Because it was beaching whales and dolphins. Yep. Really? Oh, wow. Yep. And that, that is something that's kind of unfortunate with, with our military. So, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> sorry, people got me off topic. It's okay. Let's steer back. <laughs> so um, any particular places that you guys are looking to go now? That you haven't been to yet, or anything like, oh, like that. I just want to hit like the one, the big, you know, like the big places in Harlan County, Kentucky, or West Virginia. You know, the big, the big buildings. I'm a Kirk Bride building kind of guy. I just want to. It's for me. It's the history and walking through there. You're 99 percent sure you're gonna have a great time just walking through a building. Maybe less than one, half a percent of getting something. So you, you gotta take that into consideration. <coughs> Just enjoy the time of being in there and experiencing it. Yeah, I bet a lot of that land, though, in that 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 area, like Kentucky, and what was the other state? I can't remember what the other state was. 
Well, you got Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama. No, uh, you Florida. had one, one family living in Kentucky and the other family lived in another bordering state. West Virginia? West Virginia? Yeah. And, you know, the Hatfields and McCoys. The, the, uh, longest, the longest feud in history and the bloodiest. I mean, that land in that area between those two families and all of that, you know, there's got to just be a lot of bad juju. Yep, mm -hmm. that's true. You know, I think it'd be cool just to check some of those areas out if you could pinpoint where some of the stuff happened. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think our next um, location specifically is going to be um, Brushy Mountain in Tennessee. We're um, looking forward to going there. Um, we've got some other stuff planned, like further up north, like in Pennsylvania and such, but um, still working through those plans. Yeah, we got we got a trip planned to um, not the Bel Air house, but the Ross house that's also in Bel Air, Ohio. Uh, we're gonna try that out in January. Oh, cool. That would be interesting, interesting though. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a middle of winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we, when we did Waverly the first time, it was uh, January 21st or 22nd, 17 degrees when we got back in our car at 6 a.m. No, oh, thank you. I've I, never been I, that I, cold in my life, and I never want to be that cold again. I was frozen. Absolutely. I hibernate in the winter. That's why you get, that's why, that's why you get jackets and, and, we and uh, oh, I had jackets. pants. I had thermal pants on. I had those those hot hands and toe warmers. Like I could not get those in and out quick enough because I mean it was. I've never been that. I'm a you know a Georgia Southern girl. I'm not used to the cold. So I mean I was I was not in my element and it was fun, but I was not having a good time at some of those points. I'm I, I'm sorry to laugh, Miranda. <laughs> no, it was, it was I'm rough. a I'm I'm in Wisconsin, of course, and I am a transplant from California. Ooh. Okay, so you feel my pain. If if I was back to when I first got here, you probably probably, but now I'm kind of allocated to it. So yeah, you build tolerance for it after a while. Uh. Uh, I was born and raised here. Before really? what happened to me, the cold really didn't bother me much, except I didn't have no meat on my bones to help keep me insulated. But after I got sick and I missed you know, three or four winters in a row, you know, I don't go out. I hibernate. Yeah. Yeah. I no, only go out if I absolutely necessary or my wife makes me. <laughs> yeah. I was telling Terry, I said, I feel like my bones are cold. Like I've never had that happen in my entire life that I felt like my bones were frozen. <laughs> that was a whole new level for me. Uh, but on yeah. the flip side, when we went back a second time was uh, what the end of September and it was miserably hot and humid too. So it's like you got to, you know, you had, you had both extremes and two. Right, extremes in either direction. Yeah. That one. Yeah. 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 See, we got snow now. Oh boy. It's hey, Thirty-two in stuff. snow where I'm at. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's snowing right now. I got thirty-three degrees and it's light snow. And you're always a degree warmer. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> But, but yeah, it. it I I, I kind of understand the whole thing. I mean, you got to go when you can. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, but I, now I do prefer to go when it's colder. I don't. I don't know what it is, but I do. Like I don't want to be that cold. But I prefer to investigate when it's cold. When it's colder, but I'm not. When it's hot, I don't want to go. But, um, but when it's oh, cold, you know, I prefer to do it like in the winter months, fall and winter months. I feel so like what would better. what would your temperature range be then? Sorry, I would, I would say like I don't want to go below thirty, um, like thirty to sixty. I think is where I'm at. Like I don't like when we hit seventy degrees and and it's hot. I don't know. I would say um, at night when middle of the night, like I wouldn't go below thirty or above seventy. That's my goal. I'm okay. sorry, Terry. What were you saying? Oh, I don't remember. I said, I said oh back to when it was like seventeen, about twenty to seventeen degrees. I feel like you get better activity. Air thinner, energy, you know, the energy is used less. There's less energy for them to, to, to try to communicate or you find evidence as opposed to being bogged down in humidity. That's my theory. No, no, thank you. Yeah, that, that is the one thing I don't like is the humidity. Mm -hmm. 
when it, you know, that's why I could never figure out why anybody wants to live in Florida. Right. <laughs> it is so damn humid down there. It's almost yeah. what 90% humidity half the time. And it's so, so just so hot and sticky and crappy. You need a up shower. here, we're, yeah. we're, I mean, we get enough humidity up here. So, yeah, but yeah. We have bad days, like, like where it's really bad and I can't even go out because I can't breathe. You know, a lot of people yeah. can't breathe when they go out because it's so humid. I hate that time of year, too. But I yeah. hate winter worse. Yeah. When, I when would it be... makes me hurt. No. Winter puts me in a lot of pain. Yeah. It, it has to do with the illness he had. But no, I'm, I'm more comfortable right between, I'd say, probably 62 degrees and 45. Yeah. That, that area. I can, I can run around in shorts and a short sleeve shirt and I have a problem with it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I've been, I, I've been told I'm a walking bird. You're just a freak of nature. Yeah, I probably am. I like it cold. <laughs> you know, I, I can't handle some of these people. You know, if my wife had it her way in the winter time, she'd have a fan on in the bedroom. I do have a fan on in my bedroom. For noise? No. Nope. no. Because I sleep so stinking hot. Okay. I'm, I'm serious. I've been told that I am like a walking furnace. I, I will, I'll, I'll have a, maybe a sheet on and I'll have the fan blown on me because I sleep so stinking hot. But anyway, <laughs> got off topic again. That's okay. Uh, you know, nobody's regulating our show. I it's know. I to get off topic. You got I mean, anything on your bucket list, guys? Anything really interesting other than the ones you're talking about? Uh, probably. I keep I keep referring back to Appalachia. There's a couple places like Shawnee Amusement Park in Southern West Virginia. Um, of course, the uh, penitentiary up in up in Northern West Virginia. Um, the prison up there. She had mentioned Brushy Mountain in Tennessee. That mm -hmm. that is in there. Um, we're 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 just working our way away from home. We're kind of spiraling outwards as we as we get more experience. So that's, that's what we're sticking. To. We also want to focus on our own home area, Northeast Georgia, uh, Helen, Georgia area, Dahlonega, Georgia, where they had a lot of gold rush days back in the 1800s. We feel like that's a lot of untapped. Um, area that doesn't get a lot of uh, mention, such as like Savannah or, uh, well, that a lot, of, you know, mentioned New Orleans or something like that. We just want to get out there and find our own, you know. I feel like there's places that just don't get the attention they deserve. Yeah. 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 Well, that far south, I would, I'd want to check out myself. I'd want to check out a plantation, if you know, from way back when. Yeah. To see if if there was like you know, hopefully abandoned or whatever. To see if there was activity there because of the way the slaves were were treated back then, and you know, I mean, God, you get into one of those slave houses that they had behind the mansion or plantation, whatever you want to call it. I bet you'd get a lot of activity, you know, but the land itself. Very much so. Oh, yeah. Probably absorbed most of it. That would be exciting because so, so, it can be such a beautiful building, especially if, even if it's in a rundown mm -hmm. state right. point. You know, you just got to find a way to get access, feel safe, be legal. You know, that's, yeah. That's, 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 that's one of the things that I, I try to, to do is get us. <laughs> Cut, cut through the red tape, it can be a real pain in the ass sometimes. Yeah. There's a building we've been trying since day one to access. And 
it'll end up being abandoned by the time we get access to it. Possibly. Oh wow. Yeah, it's an old. It, it's uh, um, an old uh, asylum. It, okay. Or a, a TB hospital. Tuberculosis hospital. Okay. But they and, did call them asylums back then. Yeah, it, it, and it did. It did have uh, mentally disabled and stuff. But it, it's now kind of owned by the county, and it's more of a, a records where they keep like records, you know, hard copies of all these records, where the welfare offices used to be way back in the day. You know. Yep, but I don't care about any any of the one through whatever floors i want to go in the basement basement yeah it's the important building. that's where everything yeah. is i've talked i talked to a guy that worked from their phone system okay and he said that when you walk in the building you know you, you feel normal you know, you, it's all normal through there you don't you don't have any of this heaviness or anything he says as soon as you walk down those stairs to that basement you cross that threshold you just feel this like heavy weight you can feel the heaviness of the energy in that basement. And he, he hates it because that's where the switchboard is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, wow. And I, I knew somebody that worked there, and they used to go down there to smoke in the wintertime for their breaks. Instead of going outside, they'd go to the basement. And uh, this person and their friend, they were that worked there together they went down the basement smoked a cigarette they said saw an old uh wooden wheelchair move oh wow nobody was around just them two down there and this happened to them twice when they were down there because they saw a gurney move oh my goodness after that and and but the wheelchair was interesting because she said the wheelchair looked like it was made out of wood oh wow yeah, that would have been back in the '60s type, right? Wheelchair probably, or even the '50s. Oh, wow. that's interesting. So they don't—they haven't had anyone actually go in and investigate, or they don't let you go do that. No, it's just kind of no. just word of I mouth. Tried, I have tried all my contacts that I had, and they couldn't get us in. Yeah. Oh, that's so discouraging. Yeah. yeah. Although, I, on the other hand. Um, I do have us permission to go into the old children's hospital up at our, our, uh, our campus. The only thing yeah. is I got to, I got to get a hold of the guy because we originally had it all set up. We were going to go in just before COVID hit and then COVID hit. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so that got put on hi hiatus for a while. So, but I got to get a hold of the guy. We got to arrange for us to go up there cause he's gonna, he still wants yeah. us to come do it. And uh, that's, that's, uh, I, and I'm going to say this because Tanya's not here and it won't upset her, but it's too bad, too bad Sharp passed away before we got a chance to get in there because she was a patient there when that hospital was in existence. And she told me some stories about that place as well. Yeah. So. That's a shame. Yeah. Tanya's mom. <laughs> when she was a kid, she was in that hospital. I forgot why. So, but we don't bring up the subject. But now, but now it's it's um, what is it? Um, nutritional science building. Okay. So it's all it's all laboratories in there now. It's on a but university campus. It, yeah, yeah, it's on a university, university campus. campus. But they there are still reports of tons of activity in that in that building. Oh wow. Yep. And the, and the one place I want to get is it's basically the fourth floor, but to get to access it you gotta go through the third floor, up a set of stairs. Now this this is all set up to where there's only three rooms. There's a, a hallway and three rooms once you come out of the stairwell to the fourth floor. And supposedly there's a uh, little girl that's been seen up there several times. Really? Yep. That would be a, a great place to actually set up camp. Yep. That's a story to hear or to find out why. Find out why. Yep. You know, we got a long way to go with Wisconsin. 
you know, the the campus, the UW campus, there's more than one building on that campus that's got activity. And I've already I got his permission to do one. I was working on getting his permission to go to another one, which is actually connected through the tunnel system to the old hospital or the old children's hospital. The other one is actually the old um, UW hospital, the first first hospital that was there. And they still have an active um, morgue room where they have they have the um, the classes where they teach the anatomy and and, uh, okay. and stuff. And they have an active an actual active morgue in that basement of that of that building too. Oh wow! I yeah. I had the fortune of of coming coming through and actually seeing they they had the door open. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the um, anatomy class that was in there, and I had to actually—I actually got to see the students in there working on the cadavers. Oh wow! So yeah, that's something you don't see every day. Nope, it for a lifetime. It is, it is pretty cool. <laughs> so you know, and and we've got we've got interesting stuff here in our in our university. In fact, uh, we have a hall. At our university called Bascom Hall, okay, and the quad in front of it was an old cemetery before they started building. Up oh there. wow! And it's said that at night you can see occasionally you can you can hear spirits and you can see people or a spirit walking across the grounds. You know, oh there's a lot of strange activity <laughs> in in that. Not just that, but the parts of the UW hospital itself. Mm -hmm. the, there's very old. You can tell the older parts from stuff that's been added on. Um, but the very old parts of that hospital. Yeah, there, there's some shit going on there. I mean, I used to work at that hospital as housekeeping it was an lte job and you'd swear you just cleaned up all the uh it was a casting room where they made the casts where they would make casts the plaster and stuff so you'd have to go in there and clean it and when you first get in there it's like the floor is covered with this dust this white dust powdery dust you know so we have to go in there and clean it because that's housekeeping you know get it all clean and stuff and it was one of those places we kind of, in the winter time, went off to catch a quick smoke and not get caught by the boss because it was so far away to get to because it was the old, oldest part of the building. And nobody being in there at that time of night, you know, because they have like some portable thing. They don't usually go back there at okay. night because <laughs> I was like third shift working 10 to like six in the morning. I get done cleaning in there and we get back, you know, maybe a couple hours later and it was like I never cleaned. Oh, wow. The floor was just covered with dust again. You know, and and then some of those dorms, oh my God. You know, you swear you, you know, you'd pick some shit up and move, uh, you know, and, and stuff would be put back where you found it when you first got there. You know. I believe it. Because you gotta, you gotta remember, man. Hospitals, hospitals mm -hmm. see a lot of death. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I was, I was at the the for the hospital system for six months because it lasted six months. Then I had to take a week break. Then they put me back on the campus, but I was working in the dorms down there and up on Bascom Hill area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can relate. One of my jobs with as a uh, Male for a pharmacist was working in a hospital by myself in one end of the hospital and you just feel like there's always somebody in the corner of your eye maybe something would fall or you you know you'd just be working and you would you would see kind of something in motion but you know turn and you would you would lose it um i i and i bring that up to somebody and they're like yeah i i, I who else somebody else would be there. <laughs> and they they think oh you met my friend I'm like yeah Guess so. Yeah. I, 
I know that feeling. You know, and I never thought of that stuff back then. I always thought, you know, somebody was fucking with me, you know, and just yeah. making a job harder for me or something. But then when we started getting into this, you start thinking about these things, you know. I worked at a place, I was working security for many years, and I worked at some pretty spooky buildings. I'll tell you, never thought about it until now, mm -hmm. what it might have been, you know. Yeah, it was fun when I worked security. You were in California, though, weren't you? Yep, I worked security at... at uh, two malls and then moved out here in 93 and then I started working security at uh, uh, GE Lunar over there by the by the interstate that place was kind of interesting too <clears throat> so but yeah yeah it, it's always fun always interesting so um where can people find you if they want to check your stuff out? Right now, we're Go ahead, putting Terry. stuff out on TikTok and um, and uh, Facebook whenever we get whenever we get out and got something we're showing uh, under Mighty Paranormal in both cases. And we gone to YouTube yet? Uh, we've got a profile, but we haven't dealt we haven't dabbled in that yet. Um, uh -huh. Like to, I'd like to get some good stuff before I start to dabble in that, uh, which which we're hopefully we'll be doing in 2024. Yeah, yeah we're stuff. we're hoping to ramp up our stuff here a little bit. Yeah, our our, uh, our YouTube channel is a little mix of everything. I see. Yeah. Yeah, so nice. yeah, our YouTube channel has our original first stuff that we started. Right. Yeah. If you anything before 2019, you might get offended. Yeah, <laughs> anything before 2019, it, there's no might about it. <laughs> Me and my mouth definitely will offend you. Yeah. Uh, and then, <laughs> but March 2019, we started down this path of the paranormal and been enjoying it ever since. But there's also videos up there of the puppy. Yeah, he uses it for his dog. I don't know. Well, I figured, wasn't it? Why not? You know, who wouldn't? Who doesn't love seeing a husky play with a child, an infant, or, or you know, a toddler? You know, and then that that dog's getting extremely vocal. Aw. Love our dogs. Yeah. Yep, we yep. can appreciate that. So. He's got a he's got a husky. She's a she's an absolute diva. I've got a I've got a pit bull, and she's not quite a diva, but she's spoiled. And she's Aww. a big baby. Oh God, is she ever a big baby? She is one of the sweetest pities I've ever ever had. She just wants attention. Is that's all? Yep. She. Oh, she'll come. We we have the we have this couch. It's a recliner on on each end, and then the center part folds up and down. And we'll have it folded down, and we'll be sitting there. And she will literally come up and sit right in between us, in front of that, and look at it, and then look at us, and then look at that. And it's like, give you that look that put that up because I want to get up there. Oh, <laughs> yep. And then once I once I do give in to it and I put the, the thing up, she'll jump up and put half of her body in my lap. Oh. And then lay there and then lean up against me and look up at me. She she's a, a she knows how to get to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. But you also gotta love those moments. So okay. oh yeah, I cherish them. All right. Right. Time. All right. So I'm going to make an announcement. If you want to stick around and talk, we still can after we go off the air. But next week, we'll be back same time with Brad Ferris from Speedway Paranormal Investigators. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, you all for, coming Thank you. On and for having us.
had fun. Right, and We're running out of here. Till next time, stay safe and remember anything's possible. <laughs>